Hey, everybody, how are you? Got a great show tonight, but done it then again, don't I always? Tonight we're gonna make some French onion soup a la Ed Valade. Ed, you've been asking me for two years for French onion soup. So here it is, your bleep 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 onion soup, Ed Valade. And oh, apart from that, we're also gonna have some chicken meatloaf, Charles style. So get ready, folks. Go grab a libation, strap your feed bag on, and get ready to get cooking with good looking. Because we're gonna sear tonight. Cooking with Charles is made possible by the generous donations of Sully's Superette, the Goffstown Network. If you need a helping hand, they're there to lend that helping hand. If you can lend a helping hand, they can use your help. You came back like you do every week. Thank you so, so much. All right, tonight's libation, as usual, is a Gallo Chardonnay. I'm nothing if not a cheap date, folks. Uh, as I said, this is Ed Valade's French onion soup. He's been asking me through his son, who I'm friends with since the inception, inception of the show, to make a French onion soup. So here we go, guys. To make a French onion soup, what do you need? Well, you need the goods. And the goods are, for this French onion soup, you need about three tablespoons of salted butter, some olive oil, about four medium yellow onions. I'll tell you why in a second, they have to be yellow. Uh, about two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce and four cups of a beef stock beef broth. All right, I've already got our four yellow onions already in the pan right over here. Now these onions, I got about four medium ones and I overcooked them just slightly, but it's French onion soup, so I'm not going to worry too much. You want to get your onions a nice translucent color, and you want to only use yellow onions. Why? Well, it's the best flavor. If you use a red onion and you cook that, red onions don't have a lot of flavor once they're cooked. So, now that those are sweated, as they say, you know, they're translucent, they're not brown, 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 and they're not burned. four cups of beef broth. Now, you can also use, if you want, this. This is actually a can of French onion soup. It's got everything you need in it. It's a beef broth, it's got onions, but you know what? It's a good cheat, but whatever you do, don't make that your total base, because, you know, you want this to taste good. So, I'm going to put a little more in there because I got a few more onions than I, my recipe called for because, you know, it is kind of tough to get four medium onions perfectly. So I had a bunch of small ones. I put those in. Yeah, I thought it needed some more, so put some more in. There we go. So we actually got about five, five six cups in, in here. We're going to bring this back up to a boil. Put this right over here, and we're going to add our Worcestershire sauce. Now, I don't know of any other kind of Worcestershire sauce except Leah and Perrin's. There's other brands out there, but this is, my money, the best one there is. So we want two tablespoons. And you know what? I'm going to go two and a half. I got a little more than what my recipe calls for. Okay, we're just gonna bring this up to a boil and then we're gonna simmer it for about 45 minutes. Now you're probably saying you mentioned butter, you mentioned olive oil. Well, the butter and olive oil is primarily to saute the onions and to get those, get those reduced down. But you also need some butter for your croutons. I've got some older French bread. Day old bread works great for this because what we're going to do is we're going to take this right here right now. Oop. Just butter these up lightly. 
And if you feel like making this and you don't have that crusty old bread, white bread works fine. However, if you're like me, you're going to want some big pieces, some big, I like thick bread in mine. And we're done. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw these in my oven. I'm going to give them a little toast. And that's it. Let those toast for a minute. Oh, this is look, looking good, folks. Okay. Let's get this out of the way now. We are done with this. That's going to be in a boil in a minute. And as I said, once it boils, we're going to let that simmer for about a half an hour, 45 minutes. That may seem like a long time, but that's really what you need to bring all the flavors out of the onions, of the broth, and get them all mixed together. So while we are waiting for this to come to a boil, which I can hear it rumbling right now, Let's, uh, let's get rid of the business end of the show, folks. Because you're asking yourself, wow, he's moving way too fast. How am I going to see this show 24-7? Well, you can. Because I've got a YouTube channel, Cooking with Charles M. That's, that's the search word right there. I'll bring it right to my YouTube channel. You can also email me. Tell me how much you love me or how much you hate me. Or <laughs> you just don't care one way or the other. I can be e found on my email at cookingwithcharles at gmail.com. And I know last episode I promised you Twitter. I do have Twitter now, but I'm still getting used to it. But, you know, so next time we'll have that up there. I don't want to throw it out there until I'm really comfortable using that social medium. So, right now, folks, let's take a little break. And when we come back, this will be boiling and simmering. And we will start the chicken meatloaf. You're going to love it. So, uh, you know what? Take a second, refresh your libation, and come on back. a.m. to noon. Now, you can, you can also assist them through donations of time, food, or money. Like the help they give, the help they receive is also greatly appreciated. You can reach them by calling the number on your screen or by stopping by the Parish House of St. Matthew's Church. It's located in downtown Goffstown at 7 North Mass Street, right across from Sully's. Hey, we're back. As I promised, we've got a beautiful boil going right over here. I'm going to turn this down to a simmer. And we're going to set it and forget it. Also, <coughs> while we are on break, the toast came out of the oven. You can also use a toaster for this and toast it and butter it after, toaster oven, whatever you need, whatever you have, that should work fine. Now, we have another star of our show tonight. We have chicken meatloaf. So Ed, here is your meat, your onion soup, and here is your chicken meatloaf, folks. What do we need? Well, we need chicken. Ground chicken right here. You guys are going to love this. This is a nice, healthy alternative. So what do you need? Well, you need a pound of ground chicken. You also need couple of chicken tenders or chicken pieces, whole chicken pieces. You need a quarter cup of uh, panko breadcrumbs, seasoned hopefully. Uh, you can also have your choice of cheese and barbecue sauce. Tonight we're going to use a Stubbs barbecue sauce. And where's my cheese? It's right over here. I got a, about a uh, half to three quarters of a cup of blue because I love blue cheese and mozzarella because it's creamy. Okay. So in case you haven't guessed, we are going to be having barbecued chicken meatloaf. So first things first, I'm going to don on a pair of gloves here just to make my life easier and cleaner. All right, we have right here beautiful ground chicken. Not much to do with this folks. You can use this container as your mixing container if you'd like. 
You just gotta make sure to take this little pesky piece of paper out of the bottom. Okay, and to that, you know what? I'm gonna have to do this right now. We're going to take this. Breadcrumbs, just give it a little season, a little something extra. I have made this in the past where I've taken some pumpernickel bread and some rye bread, and I have, well, I've used that as my breadcrumbs. I toasted it up real nice, and then crunched, crushed it up, and that was beautiful. Can add a little bit of pepper to that, and here we go, round two of the mixing. And before I mix that, you're going to want to pay close attention here, folks, because we're going to roll this. You're going to want to get some wax paper, parchment paper, or tin foil, or even uh, but plastic wrap will work fine, too. Lost my thought for a second. So basically, we're just gonna mix the breadcrumbs. So I put a little bit of garlic powder in here. I'm just gonna keep folding it into itself. Not really wanna crush it, but we just wanna fold it into itself until all the breadcrumbs are nicely mixed in. Then we are going to put that aside. This is what you wanna pay attention, folks. Right here. I'm gonna flatten this out as much as possible. And then when I cannot flatten it anymore, I'm gonna take the gloves off, because you know what? Now I mean business. I've got a rolling pin. And all I'm gonna do is take a little bit of oil And I'm going to just coat my, lightly coat my rolling pin with that because now I'm going to roll this out even flatter. Get this out of the way so you can get a good look at that. See what I'm doing, folks? Nice and flat, working from the center. Kind of want to just go two directions, like north, south, or east, west, whichever, whichever way you're facing right now. And I've got that about as thin as I want that right now. So, now comes the fun part. Yes, Stubbs, love this stuff. Mm. Stubbs Original Barbecue. And guys, you can make this with whatever you want. You know, I'm just giving you the foundation to build your culinary life on. <laughs> All right, there is that. I mentioned cheese. Here we go. Got some nice crumbles of blue cheese. I'm gonna get that. There we go. Perfect. Mm. And now the chicken tenders. Hmm, yeah. I'm just gonna put those right there. Do a little bit of cutting on this one. That's gonna be perfect. All right, guys. Now, this is the important part. Let me make some room here for us all to see. And get my pan out. Whew. I'm nervous. Get a drink. All right, now we're going to roll this. This is why the piece of paper here is so important. You ready? Hold the edge up like this. Fold it over, pull it out, roll it, turn it 
Turn it over. Okay, then we just want to pinch these sides. Just like that. See this, folks? Isn't that beautiful? That is what we're going to cook now. Okay. We're just going to take it on this parchment paper because parchment paper that we use can be in the oven for like 450 degrees. And that will make cleaning and, as you see, transferring it much easier. Now, this can take at 400 or 375, 20 minutes, 45 minutes. It's going to vary depending on your oven. So what I have here is I have a probe thermometer. And I'm just going to set it. It's going to beep, folks. So we're going to set this for 150 degrees. This will tell us when it's done. Ooh. Blast of hot air. In case you're wondering, this is also silicone right here, so it's oven proof up to you know bazillion degrees. And we are just gonna set that there. And well, let's check this out for a minute. That is coming along beautifully. Mm. Smells like French onion soup. Ed, you're going to be very, very happy with this. All right, folks, right now we're going to take a break because we have nothing to do but wait. So go say hi to your loved ones and come back and, uh, well, we'll start putting this together. All right, we'll see you in just a few. 10 a.m. to noon. Now, you can you can also assist them through donations of time, food, or money. Like the help they give, the help they receive is also greatly appreciated. You can reach them by calling the number on your screen or by stopping by the Parish House of St. Matthew's Church. It's located in downtown Goffstown at 7 North Mass Street, right across from Sully's. Oh, folks, guess what? We're done. Hear that sound? Right there, look at that. We are at temperature. So, guess what? Let's turn this annoying sound off. And let's get our chicken meatloaf out of the oven. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Ha-ha. Oh, this smells great. All right. We are going to let that sit right here for a couple of minutes. Look at that. Look at that. Is that not one of the most beautiful things you've ever, ever seen? Hmm? That looks great. All right, like all meats, let that set for just a few minutes. And let's get our French onion soup done. These little things over here, not dog bowls. <laughs> no, these are soup crocs. And guess what? I realize you all do not have soup crocs at home, so I will show you how to get that melty, cheesy goodness at home without the restaurant style soup crocs. All right, let's get this hot pan positioned correctly here, which means off the uneven stove. Put that one right there. Mm. Guys, I don't know where you are in the world right now, but here in New Hampshire where we tape, it is snowing like a banshee outside. It's our second storm of the season. It's cold. It's snowy. It's kind of miserable. It's a perfect night for French onion soup. Okay, this one I'm not going to put anything in because I'm going to show you how to do that without a soup crock. We're going to put some croutons right in each of these. Voila. And we're going to use, as I said, some of this right in there. 
Now, a lot of French onion soup recipes call for, well, cheese. Well, everyone does. But a lot will call for Parmesan cheese. Personally, no. I am a Swiss cheese guy for my French onion soup. Some people put mozzarella. No. I'm a Swiss cheese guy for my French onion soup, in case you did not understand that the first time. All right, look at that. Overlap all these slices. And if you're like me, the more cheese, the better. There's nothing like that crust of cheese on the outside of a French onion soup crock. When everything's cooled and you peel that off, mm, it's like perfection. Ed Valaid, you better like this. And you better make this at home. And you better email me and tell me that you made this at home. And this, folks, if you don't have that handy dandy soup crock that the restaurants can go using that can go in your oven, just take your piece of crouton bread, put the cheese over it, put that in your oven, transfer it over after. Mm -mm, mm -mm. All right. So here we go. That should not take that long at all. Oh, you guys are going to love this when you make this at home. Mm. I got about five servings right here. And one very important thing to remember. While you are filling your crocs or your bowls with... Oh, no. Oh, here we go. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's still Monday morning wherever we are. <laughs> Make sure that when you fill these crocs or your bowls, you leave about a half an inch at the top because you want room to put the crouton on and the cheese to melt down into. All right. Let me see how that's melting. Mm. God, I can't wait. I can't wait till that stuff is done. <laughs> oh. Put that on a broil now. All right, this has cooled off a little bit. Oh, love, love this little tool. This is a polder thermometer. It can tell you the oven temp, and it can also tell you when things come to temp, so you don't have to guess. This took about 25 minutes. But this thermometer is a godsend in any kitchen because, well, you don't have to cut into things. You can put it in there, leave it and it will tell you when it's done. And if you do use this, you'll know, and you'll read about it, and you'll find out too, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. Set it for about five or 10 degrees below your desired temperature, because when you pull it out, it's still gonna cook. And if you leave it in there for a minute because you can't get to it right away, it's still gonna cook. Let's take this from the middle. Oh, this is juicy goodness, folks. Oh, this is looking great. Mmm, smell that blue cheese. This is divine, guys. Oh, can we get a close-up of this? Look at that, huh? That's all the chicken tenders in there. And I use chicken tenders. Uh, <coughs> you can put whatever else you want in there. I do that when the rolling, when I roll it. I probably could have rolled this a little bit tighter, but it's still going to taste great. But I use that to give it bulk, and it gives it a little something extra visually when you cut into it. All right, let's see how this soup is doing. Oh, it's looking awesome. I don't know why I'm whispering. Wow. Huh? Huh? Cheesy, gooey goodness right here, guys. And like I said, 
You get a regular kitchen bowl that can't go in the oven. Voila, that is done. Oh, that's dinner, folks. That is dinner. Let me get this out of the way. Actually, you know what? Good place to keep this is warm in the oven. Now comes the best part. You can taste what you've done. Where are my utensils? Here we go. Let me try this meatloaf first. Mm, chicken meatloaf, as I said, it's a great, great variation on regular meatloaf. Mm. Tastes like chicken. Mmm. <laughs> Wow, this is so wonderful, guys. You're gonna love this. Oh, wow, incredible. Now, the best part, the thermonuclear part. Mm, that is so good, that chicken meatloaf. Now, Ed Valade, here's your bleep and onion soup. <laughs> it's oniony, it's soupy, it's awesome. Let me get my knife right in there and get some of this crouton out with that cheese. Oh, see that? See that cheese? Mmm, yum, 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 yum. Guys, restaurant quality food in your own home. All right, guys, till next week. Remember, when you cook with Charles, you're cooking with good looking. Make this with the ones you love, and they're going to love you back. We'll see you next week.